Hello, my name is Glenn Hall and today is April 12th, 2023. Today's video is called, I Will Vomit You From My Mouth. And uh, I changed the title of yesterday's video to, What is Truth? There were a couple um, scriptures I wanted to add to that. So let's go to that first. Let's start with um, John chapter 18. This is right at the time when Jesus is being given up by the Jews to be crucified. And they could not crucify people on their own, so they had to give him to the Roman ruler who in this area was named Pilate. In verse 33, it says this, John 18, 33. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? Now remember yesterday, in the beginning of Jesus' letter to the Laodiceans, he begins by saying, the words of the Amen. And that means, that word Amen means truth. So the words of the truth, that's what Jesus, that's how Jesus introduced himself to the Laodiceans. And... Pilate has the question that all men should have, which is, what is truth? Well, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul says this. I'm going to read verses 1 through 12. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers. He could have said, now concerning the coming of the truth, and are being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the divorcement comes first, the stepping away from a state of being comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction." Now I ask you, has there not been a stepping away from a state of being with respect to the COVID shot? Isn't that changing men? Isn't that melding men with machine, creating something called transhumanism? Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the stepping away from a state of being comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Well, isn't that what we're seeing? That Satan, Satan at this time is trying to take control of men to set himself up in the temple, which is us, proclaiming himself to be God, so that if he were successful and he got us plugged into the machine, all we would hear would be his voice saying that he was God, not our God. But many people are so ignorant of the times in which we live, they don't even know that this is on the doorstep.
I sometimes wonder why I continue teaching because so few people listen and so few people have any understanding about where we are in history. But we are here. We are at this time. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. Well, I think he's out of the way now. The Holy Spirit is allowing evil to pervade every single aspect of society. Our world is destroyed. We are never going back to what we thought was normal. And it wasn't normal because it was corrupt. It was utterly corrupt. But we see the corruption now. But amazingly, most people don't see it even now. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan, with all power and false signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. Jesus is the truth. Therefore God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false, in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. What is truth? Jesus is the truth. So Jesus reveals himself as the truth, the faithful and true witness and the beginning of God's creation to the church in Laodicea. And then he says this, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Strong words, I will vomit you out of my mouth. How, how are they in his mouth? Well, as Paul says when he addresses the Athenians in Greece, and he perceives that they are very religious, and then he goes down to talk about people should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he's actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. That's Acts 17, verse 28. In him we live and move and have our being. So in him we are. And here he tells the Laodiceans, Laodiceans that I am about to vomit you out of my mouth. Vomit. Well, let's, you know, there's, there's key words in Scripture that help us to understand things. And so this word vomit is a very strong word. And now we're going to look at some Scriptures that deal with that idea. In um, Leviticus, chapter 18, chapter 18 is a chapter of unlawful sexual relations. He begins the chapter by saying this, I am spoke to Moses saying, speak to the people of Israel and say to them, I am, I am your God. You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt, 
where you lived, and you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan, to which I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes. You shall, you shall not walk in their rules. You shall not walk in their laws. You shall follow my rules and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am, I am your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my rules. If a person does them, he shall live by them. I am, I am. And then he goes through a whole list of unlawful sexual relations. And then he comes down, I'm going to skip most of that, and then start again in verse 19. Verse 20. And you shall not lie sexually with your neighbor's wife, and so make yourself unclean with her. You shall not give any of your children to offer them to Moloch, and so profane the name of your God. I am. I am. So you shall not offer your children in sacrifice. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. And you shall not lie with any animal, and so make yourself unclean with it. Neither shall any woman give herself to an animal to lie with it. It is perversion. Do not make yourself unclean by any of these things. For by all these, the nations I am driving out before you have become unclean. And the land became unclean, so that I punished its iniquity. And the land vomited out its inhabitants. And you shall keep my statutes and my rules and do none of these abominations, either the native or the stranger who sojourns among you. For the people of the land who were before you did all of these abominations so that the land itself became unclean. Do not do these things, lest the land vomit you out when you make it unclean, as it vomited out the nation that was before you. For everyone who does any of these abominations, the persons who do them shall be cut off from among their people. So keep my charge never to practice any of these abominable customs that were practiced before you and never to make yourselves unclean by them. I am, I am your God. Chapter 19 we're introduced to the great command, love your neighbor as yourself. And then he gives quite a few other laws there. Then in chapter 20, he comes back to punishment for child sacrifice. Verse 6 of 20 says, If a person turns to mediums and necromancers, whoring after them, I will set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am, I am your God. This nation now, America, what is it characterized by? Sexual immorality, child sacrifice that we call abortion and all kinds of satanic ritual. We see that all the time in movies, sports, music and Much of the church is quiet about it. And I think much of the church even indulges in it. For example, the church of Thyatira was given to sexual immorality because they followed that woman Jezebel. The church of Pergamum followed Balaam, who also taught the people to commit sexual immorality. Laodicea, I believe, practices all of those sins. And she is neither hot nor cold. She's the church you see everywhere. She's every denomination.
She's what the church has become at the end of the age. You find very little of the true church that God wants, the church that is called to be holy. And what does God say he will do with people who turn to the ways of the nations that were before them? You know, we this nation, America, was once a land of milk and honey, but it's now become polluted, both physically with poisons and polluted with every sin imaginable and sins that were not even imaginable at the time when Leviticus was written. He goes through many more sins in this 20th chapter of Leviticus and then winds up with uh, verse 22. You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my rules and do them, that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. And you shall not walk in the customs of the nation that I am driving out before you. For they did all these things and therefore I detested them. But I have said to you, You shall inherit their land, and I will give it to you to possess, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am, I am your God, who has separated you from the peoples. You shall therefore separate the clean beast from the unclean and the unclean bird from the clean. You shall not make yourselves detestable by beast or by bird or by anything with which the ground crawls, which I have set apart for you to hold unclean. You shall be holy to me, for I am, I am I am holy, and I have separated you from the people that you should be mine. And the last verse of chapter 20, A man or a woman who is a medium or a necromancer, that means a witch or a warlock, shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones, their blood shall be upon them. We have people in pulpits who preach that abortion is a sacrament that God approves. We have people in pulpits who preach that homosexual pastors are a good thing. We have no discernment of good and evil in our churches. What do we have in our churches? Well, let's go to Isaiah 28. Aha, the proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim. Ephraim, prophetically, is the church. Ephraim was the northern kingdom of Israel that was dispersed among all the nations of the earth and who, whose peoples later became the Christian nations of the world. And now, those Christians those once Christian nations have become as defiled as Ephraim was when God destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel. What were they doing? Jezebel came from there. They were worshiping Baal. They were sacrificing their children to Baal, to Moloch, to the false god that they worshipped. Ah, the proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim. Isaiah wrote this just before, just before Israel was destroyed, around 721 B.C. Ah, the proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim. Ah, the proud crown of the drunkards of the church. And this drunkenness is talking about drunk with false doctrine. False prophetic things, as we will soon learn. The fading flower of its glorious beauty, which is on the head of the rich valley of those overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has one who is mighty and strong, like a storm of hail, a destroying tempest, like a storm of mighty overflowing waters. He cast down of the earth with his hand. The proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim will be trodden underfoot. The church, 
of Laodicea. And the fading flower of its glorious beauty, which is on the head of the rich valley, will be like a first ripe fig before the summer. When someone sees it, he swallows it as soon as it is in his hand. And that day, I am of hosts, will be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people and a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment and strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. This is talking about the glorified Kodeshim, the glorified saints of God. Then he goes back to describe the proud crown of Ephraim. These also reel with wine and stagger with strong drink. The priest and the prophet reel with strong drink. They are swallowed by wine. They stagger with strong drink. They reel in vision. They stumble in giving judgment. For all tables are full of filthy vomit with no space left. You see, the false prophets, the false pastors, the wolves in sheep, sheep's clothing, The ones who look like a lamb but speak like a dragon, reel with wine, stagger with strong drink. They spew forth false doctrine. They announce visions of their own hearts, words that they steal from one another. They prophesy the imaginations of their wicked hearts. That's what the wine is. That's what the strong drink is. They reel with it. They're swallowed up by it. They stagger with strong drink. They reel in vision and they stumble in giving judgment. They cannot judge correctly. They cannot judge according to the word of God. All their tables are full of filthy vomit with no space left. And then, then a mysterious verse suddenly occurs. To whom will he teach knowledge? And to whom will he explain the message? He's talking about God, of course. And then he answers it. Now, in the English Standard Version, they put a question mark after this, but it's not a question mark. This is the answer to the question. He will teach knowledge to those who are weaned from the milk. He will explain the message to those who are taken from the breast. In other words, God will explain his truth to those who are finally weaned from the milk. What's the milk? Jesus died for your sins. You go to church, and that's usually the sermon you hear, Jesus died for your sins. Yes, but what? Then what? Because you are neither cold nor hot, I'm about to vomit you from my mouth. What do you mean, cold or hot? Well, if you were cold, you wouldn't say you believed in me at all. If you were hot, you would know that I was the truth, and you would speak the truth and not lies. You wouldn't be drunk on false doctrine. You wouldn't be drunk with false visions. You wouldn't be spewing forth prophetic nonsense that I never said. But you have to be weaned from the milk. Well, how how do you become weaned from the milk? He tells us in the next verse, verse 10, Isaiah 28, 10. For it is precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. He who says he has nothing, even what he has, I will take away, says Jesus. You have something. You have the seed. Are you watering the seed? 
Are you feeding the seed? Is the seed growing? Is it going to produce fruit? Or are you like these that God rebukes in the church of Laodicea? God does not give us so many false prophets and new age false prophets talk about getting downloads from God. God does not give you a download of all his truth at one time. You learn his truth precept upon precept. You learn, oh, God doesn't want me to do that. God doesn't want me involved in uh, fornication. God doesn't want me to lie. God doesn't want me to steal. Oh, then I'll stop doing that. It's precept upon precept. Line upon line. Learning what God wants and then obeying it. Obeying it by faith, the obedience of faith, by the power of the Holy Spirit when you believe in Christ, then you begin to put down sin. And when you do that, and you continue to look into God's Word, He will then teach you things that you had no idea of. Isaiah 28, verse 14 and following. Therefore hear the word of I am, you scoffers, who rule this people in Jerusalem, who rule the church and think that you are the bride of Christ, that you are new Jerusalem. Because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with Sheol we have an agreement, When the overwhelming whip passes through, it will not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. That's a fact. The church has made lies their refuge, and falsehood their shelter. Therefore, thus says I am, the Lord I am. Behold, I am the one who is laid as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. That's the stumbling stone, that's Jesus, the truth. He laid it. Whoever believes will not be in haste. You will learn line upon line, precept upon precept. And I will make justice the line, and righteousness the plumb line. Justice, the line, the measuring line, justice. That's the way we relate person to person, is with justice. But does the church teach that? Doesn't the church have as many greedy souls in it as the world who think that it's okay? Like the Pharisees, they find ways to break the law but still say that they're doing the law. I will make justice the line. That's the measuring line. That's the way we relate to one another is with justice. And I will make righteousness the plumb line. That's our relationship with God. Be holy for I am holy, says God. Did that change in the New Testament? Do you think Jesus doesn't want us to be holy? In the book of Hebrews it says, Without holiness, no one will see God. No one. We have that relationship of righteousness and holiness with God. And that allows us to deal in justice with our fellow men. We love God. We love men. 
That's what that means. That's what that's talking about. And hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and waters will overwhelm the shelter. Then your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it passes through, it will take you. For morning by morning it will pass through, by day and by night, and it will be sheer terror to understand the message. For the bed is too short to stretch oneself on, and the covering too narrow to wrap oneself in. For I am will rise up as on Mount Perizim, as in the valley of Gibeon he will be roused to do his deed, his strange deed, and to do his work. Alien is his work. Now therefore do not scoff, lest your bonds be made strong. For I have heard a decree of destruction from the Lord I am of hosts against the whole land. Have you not Have you not heard the decree of destruction? Why won't anyone listen? Why do you think you can rebuild? Don't you see that the foundation is destroyed? Do you realize just this past week seven of nine Supreme Court justices ruled that West Virginia could not have a law that prohibited men from saying they were women and participating in women's sports. Seven of nine. You cannot make a righteous law in this nation because a federal court and sometimes a state court will overthrow it. And that overthrow will be upheld by the Supreme Court. Do you realize it was three that, th- that, that the three Donald Trump appointments all voted to let transgenders participate in women's sports? Did you know that? Donald Trump. And how many Christians are still fighting for Donald Trump? He will be reelected. And then the mark of the beast comes in full force. And yet you are still not awake. Yes, it is sheer terror to understand this message. Because we live at the end of the age. We live at the beginning of the Great Tribulation. And it's the Church of Laodicea who lives there. And then go to 2 Peter chapter 2. Chapter 2 of 2 Peter is almost identical to the book of Jude. And it discusses the false prophets who have sneaked into the churches and describes them. Starting with verse 14. These False prophets, these false pastors, these false apostles, these super apostles, have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice steady souls. They have hearts trained in greed, accursed children. Forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing. It's all about profit. 
It's all about pro give me money. All my pages are monetized. You know, they got to they got to make money off of everything they say. They've got their products, they've got their CDs, they've got their conferences and they always make money from from all of it. Got to make money. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, from false prophecy, false preaching, but was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These, these false prophets, these false apostles, are waterless springs and mists driven by a storm. For them, the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved for speaking loud boasts of folly. They entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those who live in error. So newly saved people, they get caught up in all of their proclamations that they're seeing miracles. And it's all false. It's all done by demonic spirits, nothing by the Spirit of God. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. For whatever overcomes a person to that, he is enslaved. For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. It would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after, turn, after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. They didn't go on to save their souls. They believed this simple doctrine. Jesus died for my sins. And they never read the word themselves. And they never had a pastor who said, okay, now learn to become a son of God. Learn to be holy as God is holy. And learn to depend upon the Holy Spirit to lead you in the path of righteousness. What the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit. And the sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. And so... Jesus says, I know your works. I know the things you do. But you're neither cold nor hot. Would, would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. This is the condition of the church of Laodicea. This is the condition of most of the world's churches. Of course, you have faithful people here and there. I'm going to end this video here and hope to finish the rest of Christ's letter to the Church of Laodicea next time because there is a lot of promise even to this church. A lot of promise. Our God is a merciful God and that's why time is still going on because He wants everyone to come to repentance.